Hey guys, welcome to the 2015 AT&T Developer Summit Hackathon. Or as we like to call it, the Epicthon. <laughs> I'm Callie Lewis. I'm John P. We are broadcasting live here from Las Vegas. We're at the Palms Casino and Resort. We are. And we are here with many, many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of friends. Lots and lots of people. These guys behind us are developers, and they are here attending the AT&T Hackathon uh, to try and create new services, new products, new apps. It's all based around mobile, right? So you can you can create anything that you would like, essentially, with these hackathons and this particular hackathon, as long as it is mobile-related. Uh, yeah which is a huge, well, huge isn't, open door. Isn't everything essentially mobile nowadays? I mean, even, I'll give you an I example. I can think of a side or two that aren't. Well, I mean, <laughs> how about this? Shouldn't everything be mobile? Yes, Because, it like, be. for example, my car has an app. I can start it right now. Yes. I can start my car from across the country. I can start my uh -huh. car, okay? So, I mean, basically everything is going to have some kind of a mobile component to it at exactly. some point. Exactly. And actually, there are some guys out here working on um, car-connected types yep. of, uh, of and apps. And home-connected apps. Home-connected apps. Using I even the AT&T Digital Life. Quadcopter-connected apps. Did you? I did. I heard of that. <gasps> yeah, Ooh, I yeah, want to hear about yeah, that one. All kinds of stuff. So the event itself actually lasts for two days. Yes. Now let's let's we're gonna let me give you guys a little bit of information. Then we're gonna we're gonna kind of kick off the broadcast. But we are gonna probably take a break in, in a between. little bit. Okay. So what's gonna happen just from a structural standpoint here? Well, we're getting all official. Yeah, we're we're gonna get official <laughs> in here. So what we're gonna do is. We're going we're gonna to give you guys the background. We're going to talk a little bit about the event. But what we're waiting on is we're waiting on the top 20 teams. So there are 900, about 900 developers here all working on apps. And they, they've broken themselves up into teams. So it could be two team members in a team or it could be five. Who, it could who be knows? eight. Uh, and then they are all competing against each other to be one of these 20 finalists that we're going to hear from up on stage here in a bit. Yeah, now you might say, well, why would they want to do that? Well, I got a couple hundred thousand reasons why. <laughs> <laughs> There's huge amounts of where's, prizes. Where's the money? Oh, where's well, the money, John? We, do, we don't have the money, but what <laughs> we I'll show you some of the things that, well, We'll get to that in a second. So let yes. me just finish that one thought because with all these shiny things around, I get distracted. But <laughs> I always get distracted, do. don't it's I? It's easy to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you and talk to you about some of this stuff. And then in a little while, when everybody's kind of got their project to the point where they're ready to do their pitches, we'll probably take a short break and we'll come back and we're going to watch the top yes. 20 get up and they're going to say, here is what we hacked together. Here's what we developed. And it's not just them telling you about it because they have had 24 hours, not only to come up with the idea, develop it, look at all of the sponsors and the gear that they have here on site available to hack, they have also had to create something ready to go, which That's means right. demos. That's right. Which is really exciting because it is the week of CES after all, and yes. we're all primed and ready for some awesome gadgetry and and apps and and just geeky cool stuff. stuff. Okay, listen. So we were going to tell you about kind of what a hackathon is. But, you know, why should we do that when really Alex can do so much better Alex job? Alex Don, one of the guys who puts on this entire uh, yeah. event and has for many years. Yeah. Uh, he's going to tell you all about it. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. 
There we go. We're at the uh, 2015 AT&T uh, Dev Developer Summit Hackathon, and as you can see behind us, we have a bunch of devs, and uh, they're all competing for 200 thousand plus two hundred thousand dollars plus in prizes and then we give away a bunch of swag as well um about another two hundred thousand plus in swag pretty cool stuff and so uh these some of these you know spring wave cat ears given away a lot of uh, embedded systems uh and just uh iot devices you know uh and a, b a bunch of sponsors here they're giving away free access to their apis and everything and uh yeah so it's a lot of fun so it's a way for community, for developers to, to come together with the community and um, be able to learn, create, all of that. How does that benefit at and We have APIs, right? So <laughs> <laughs> that's the easy one, right? So you go to developer.att.com, you can check out our APIs, right? We also have connected car, digital home, uh, digital life, apologize, uh, connected car, uh, ATT drive, right? Uh, and so you can check out those new APIs as well. Um, and then the larger... Uh, interest is in the community and really just helping out uh, the different different communities come together as well as uh, give people opportunities right it's it's um, we have access to a lot of the sponsors and so you know I love to be able to give back to the communities and enable people that haven't seen microprocessors before or you know be able to build a, uh, an app that remotely opens your garage door or see your temperature in your house uh, just the opportunity to be able to interact with the senior developers that can enable that kind of activity and, and at least if nothing else guide you down the path of learning about it more uh, and then getting you hooked up with all the different um, mentors as well as just the, again the community the people that are willing to help and answer those questions for you I have one last question uh, it, it's moving quite a bit what are you thinking and what does that mean me. Well, uh, it just means that I've I've been thinking about your question, and I'm I'm going through all the different uh, <laughs> machinations and how to answer it properly. <laughs> it's a, it's scaring me. It's scaring me a little bit. It's okay. It's just saying hi. Hi. Okay, guys, all we're right, gonna keep quiet in the house, please. Here we go. Okay. Our first this presentation is, is coming happening. up right now. So these are the 20 finalists that the judges have pre-selected, mm -hmm. uh, and they will be judged based on their presentations. Now, remember, um, they only get three minutes, three to four minutes. Yeah. All right, here we go. Here we we're go. starting the first see. one. It's 2015, and you're in your office building in the corporate world. All of a sudden, there is a fire or some other danger in the building. What do you do? If you're like most companies, you follow your evacuation plan, head out the door, and try to find your group leader. Am I right? So what, yeah, I hear some few yeses there. So what if your group leader is late to getting outside? What if you can't see them over the crowd? What if they didn't come to work that day? We are Team Red Alert. And over this weekend, we have built the best evacuation management system of the new year. The, all right. The key enabling technologies include AT&T Flow Designer, which connects all of our devices together, AT&T M2X for data storage, triggering, logging, analytics, and also for, for any of the analytics that we have on our system. Windows Universal for the administrative desktop and mobile applications, Android and Bluetooth Low Energy for our automated evacuee tracking. Red Alert knows via Bluetooth check-in and M2X that you are at work that day. When Red Alert is activated by an administrator, it will trigger the Philips Hughes lights throughout the building. There'll be a line of lights that'll show up. It will send an alert to a smart Samsung device phone and watch, and there is an emergency. It'll send that emergency to that watch and release the MediaTek-enabled drones. Basically, what we have is a tethered drone right now for safety reasons, but we actually do send the messages over there. The drones are your new group leader, always there flying over your head. You are automatically checked into your drone via BLE proximity check-in. Once all group members are checked into our Red Alert system, our Red Alert system triggers via the AT&T M2X foundation that you are safe. The Philip Hughes turns green to indicate the threat has passed and your family is notified of your safety. Note, we have two drones here, drone A, and drone B. If you happen to check into drone B, 
through M2X, it will communicate that you've checked in over here on this side of the building, and it will alert Drone A. It's 2015, guys. Red alert. It's time to upgrade. That was sweet. That was that awesome. That was sweet. I can't imagine having a flying robot uh, <laughs> chauffeur me out of a burning building. Oh, he's still talking. Any technical questions? Related to what we've showed you today. George, thank you for your time. All right, next up we have uh, Gamified Home. You guys ready to go? Big yes. round of applause for Red Alert, please. Keep it rolling, guys. Escorted from a building by a robot, by a flying uh, robot quadcopter. Uh, well, of course I Actually, would Actually, there's a little something in that for both of us, because I love quadcopters. Quadcopters, I love robots. It's all it's all I love fire. Use handhelds. Use handhelds. But you're trying to run away from it in this case. I don't know that I, w I would. Yeah, you go well, into it? Would you want a drone that would actually lead you into the fire? I don't no, think, I think that they I would think do I that. I think I want it to lead me out. Yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Weavers. Yeah. yeah. All right, here we go. Okay, weavers. We're waiting. So it takes a few minutes for everybody to get up there on the stage. So what's happening is uh, they actually have two stages, essentially, on each side of the stage, oh. <laughs> two presentation stations. Um, and so yeah, and they're trying to get anti set up. Snooze. They prep one on An one side. Anti-snooze. Anti-snooze. They prep one on one side, prep one on the other side. Yes. Go back and forth. Never mind, we're going back to... Never mind, we're going back to... to you've got to be present and ready to present when it's time to go. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. So it is live, and these things are complicated. Oh. However, we like to have fun. So we try to use the AT&T Digital Life APIs, um, M2X, M.Dot Text-to-Speech, and the Harman Speaker APIs, along with some 3D printing, to turn a home into a game, a scenario. So we'll demo that scenario now. I'm getting word that robots are invading. Your front door is unlocked. Lock it before they get here. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Listen, do you hear them? Oh, no. They got a toxic ass grenade in somehow. Open a window to vent the gas. Gotta vent the gas. Vent the gas. <laughs> Gotta vent the gas. Good. That should take care of the gas. <laughs> Watch out. One of the robots is inside. Quick, shoot it. Now, go shut the window. You don't want more getting in. All the windows. Good job. Hopefully that keeps them out, but they have hacked the cameras. Shoot the camera to disable it. No. One more to your left. Throw it in water to short it out. Excellent work. It looks like you chased them off. You are safe for now. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> They'll be back. <laughs> they will be back. Thank you. All right, big round of applause. <laughs> that 
Jones. That was funny. Ha, 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 ha. That was a really great presentation, actually, right. just from a, a, a goofy perspective, you know. I know. But that was Nerf actually... Guns. They used the, I guns. like the way they're gamifying the home automation yes. experience. That's exactly. important. So you could see all kinds of uses for that. Totally. Um, and, and walking you through an emergency situation, right? Yeah. That's... that's um, I've seen some of that out on the market, but just from a single one-time perspective. Yep. Okay, here comes the next one. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so according to a national poll, it has been revealed that um, about 168 million Americans, adult drivers, have been reported to feeling drowsy while operating a vehicle. What's more alarming is that about 40% of that population has revealed that they've fallen asleep at the wheel. So today we're gonna use technology to show you how we plan to reduce those numbers significantly in order to optimize a safe driving range on the road. We're using Intel Sense um, camera, sorry, <laughs> Intel RealSense camera um, to detect four things specifically. Yawning, blinking, um, shifting of the pupils, and eyes being shut. So what I'm gonna do right now is close my eyes for a few seconds. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, this is a strange angle. Um, I'm gonna close my eyes for a few seconds and this will incite a warning. <laughs> is it happening? <laughs> it's not happening. There we go, okay. And that'll simultaneously set off a vibration on the smartwatch to attempt to wake the driver up. And you're gonna disable that alarm by looking straight at the camera or normally looking in the general direction of the road in order to disable those warning signals. <laughs> and it is also detecting that I'm looking away right now, which will also incite an alarm. Um, at the same time, we're using Intel Edison chip to warn surrounding drivers of um, the presence or identification of a drowsy driver. So, um, the red light will be, it'll set off red L LED lights and um, flash signals for, um, sorry, <laughs> to set off signals. This is really hard to do with my eyes closed. Okay, <laughs> there we go. So as these alarms go off, it'll simultaneously warn surrounding drivers to avoid our vehicle because there is a drowsy driver operating the wheel. And I'm now going to disable. <laughs> that would be it. Now let me try to disable these alarms by looking straight at the camera. Or again, this camera will be situated at the road. <sighs> right, nice. And we can try to yawn too. This is embarrassing. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is a very advanced prototype that is meant to, <laughs> as embarrassing as it looks to to have to make a demo of. Um, it will. Let me try one more time. There we go. You can try it out. And then, I invite you all to try it out. Um, yeah, I invite all of you to try this out because it is meant to work for um, all facial recognitions and um, it is meant to detect all... Um, <laughs> okay, at the same time. Okay, um, just to go into the implementations of devices that we used to create this device, um, we used AT&T's um, auto API, uh, Windows Phone, and the Intel Edison uh, chip in order to warn drivers of their drowsiness and inattentiveness to the road. We also used um, AT&T M2X and um, AT&T Flow um, as a mechanism of, sorry, as a, back, as a backhand mechanism to store data or for database purposes. Do you want to? All right, uh, so, and then we use the AT&T sponsored data, uh, as well as using AT&T RTC, that actually sends a text message to your loved ones. Um, and uh, Intel, obviously, Intel's uh, RealSense cameras make this happening. This is all open sourced. This was made, like, 90% of the code was written by Intel. Thank you, guys. Much.
Okay, that was so freaking. Right, can you believe they built that, that in was, 24 hours? That was really, really cool. Um, it was detecting it, her yawning. It, it was detecting was. her eyes closed. It was and giving you warnings. You know what? All I could think was deck, I yawn. would be screwed. Because you yawn so much. Yeah. That's true. It would be a warning all of it. <laughs> what was also amazing was it would tell another car there's a drowsy exactly. driver in the other car. Now, the drivers have to know what that would be, but even a red flashing light, they would know something is up. So yeah. they would be looking for swerving. They would be looking for something. Yeah. Just make that you a little was, more alert, right? I heard about this ahead of time, and I was really anxious to see it. So that was a really, really cool presentation. I cannot believe that they built... I mean, even even with the open source, they, they said like 90% of the code was open source and stuff. Right. But even with that, I can't believe they just knocked that out. I know. It's, Hi. It's Hi. Here we go. Hi, next, everyone. Next um, we are Weavers. And um, so... We all love to watch TV, and TV is better when you have friends and family to watch it with, but you can't always be near them. So what we did was we created an app that uh, makes it so that you can watch TV with your friends and provide feedback about what you're watching, whether you'd like it or dislike it. Um, so what we did was we integrated a uh, bunch of different APIs, uh, AT&T, SDK, uh, sponsored data, digital life and advertising, as well as uh, we run the entire back end on Couchbase. And uh, we also integrated, hmm? yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so uh, we have the ability to set a profile um, and then also integrate with the digital life API. So go back really quick. So basically what a viewing party is, is you are able to select a show, say what that show is, what that show is, what you want the title of your viewing party to be, set a time, and then add attendees. So when you add attendees, anybody who's on the AT&T network is going to get an SMS notification saying that they have been invited to a party, so they can now go to the app. And so we're going to add somebody here. Oh, never mind. So we'll use one that already exists, or create one. So we create a new one. Now, let's look at going into an actual viewing party. So up here we have our main computer, and we have our attendees, and then on the left side we have our chat window. Uh, with the chat window, we integrated the advertising API, so while you're chatting, you see the ads right in front of you. Um, we added advertising because we have the entire back end running through sponsored data. So the advertising offsets the sponsored data and also saves people from using the data on their data plan when they're traveling. Um, so here you see some live uh, WebRTC going on. Uh, we also have the ability to do video chat with WebRTC, if you so choose. And then also, uh, the host of the party can control the video, or can control for the entire group. So what I mean by that is we've, infer, uh, we've integrated the uh, Wonder Bar, and with that we have infrared controls. We use that along with the uh, pause and play uh, in order to pause a uh, DVR device, uh, whether it be Uverse or Cox or whatever you have. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a device with infrared to demo here, but uh, it's a concept. Um, we also have the ability to control lights. So when, you're, when, the group, uh, when the person running the group hits pause, it's going to bring up the lights, which <laughs> we are using in the back there. Um, and then when they hit play again, it's going to drop the lights back down so everybody can uh, see well. So uh, yeah, and that all runs on WebRTC as well. So uh, we chose this app because we travel a lot and we like a lot of the same shows. So it's good to be able to stay in touch and watch these shows together, uh, the things we like. So yeah, that's our app. Very cool. So I think that would be fun because if you're gonna sit around watching TV, you might as well watch it with your friends and be able to chat. You in fact, that's what we're well. doing right now, right? You guys are <laughs> watching us and you're chatting you. on our, yes. on our, you know, chat. By the way, if you're just watching are. the stream and you don't know, you can head over to geekbeat.tv forward slash att, and you can also chat with us Indeed. there too. There's more going on the stage. An example use case would be forming a team at a hackathon like this. We have three key features that I'd like to highlight. Number one, 
hyperlocation, no location tracking, no GPS. We use Bluetooth detection of devices, so 30 feet radius, roughly. Number two, no contact information is ever exchanged until it's mutually agreed upon. We use IBM and AT&T APIs to proxy this. Number three, open APIs. Everything you see it was designed with open integration with third-party apps in mind. To summarize the APIs we're using, AT&T SMS, AT&T Ads, AT&T WebRTC, IBM, Bluemix, and Watson User Modeling. We're also uh, entering the Ent Ericsson Enterprise Wearable Challenge. Example use cases, dating, but we were told not to show that use case. We're gonna show recommending Sorry, forming a team at a hackathon. We have right here, Jane, a UX expert. Jane is gonna go online now. He's gonna make himself visible. He's gonna say, hopefully you can see, it's supposed to say UX, looking for a UX designer on a team. On the Android device, you will get an alert once you hit, he hits uh, the status update. The Android is actually a custom UI. Everything is custom. We, we, we rewrote it for Google. Uh, um, he's gonna uh, swipe to send his per picture to the other guy, which gives permission to contact each other using SMS. We switch over to the SMS app. He can type in a message, uh, hello or whatever, and we're using the at and uh, APIs to send SMS, and you can then con uh, contact each other using uh, SMS. We're gonna do this again, but we're gonna do it with WebRTC. So Jane is gonna go, oh, do we have to switch over to Wi-Fi? It's on Wi-Fi, okay. We're gonna go, uh, Jane's gonna say, hey, I'm looking to join a team. Picture, swipe to connect. Picture again, swipe to connect via web. Now it's gonna show up, you might wanna turn the, uh, right here. You, you may not be able to see it, but it is active. We're gonna say yes. We're gonna have a phone call. It's gonna connect to um, John's phone. It'll take about three rings before we connect, and we'll just be able to say, while I talk, I'll remind you of the three advantages of option three. Number one, hyperlocation. No tracking, no GPS, Bluetooth, proximity only. So you're physically local to each other. Number two, privacy is guaranteed with AT&T and IBM. We do not provide co any contact information unless you mutually accept. That, that proves the phone call's going on. Number three, open APIs. That's all we have, and if you want to know why we call option three, come talk to us at the bar afterwards. Uh, <laughs> nice. Well, actually going and talking to them at the bar afterwards would be something you could use their app for exactly. if you had it. Well, that was the right? whole point you of saying that, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, you <laughs> form a team, whatever, get to know other More, people. wearable home. Okay, wearable home. So, personal black box. Where's personal black box? Okay, you guys are right there, great. Uh, fam Jam's there. E-N-U-K? In the UK? GD, okay. EDUK, EDUK, EDUK. Where are you guys? Okay. Uh, traced. Dude, where's my stick? Thanks, guys, thanks. Connect your granny car. Zone four, host magic. Pet alone, one. Okay, so Alex is up there chatting with these people because he's trying to get them lined up so that we know who's going to be presenting exactly. next. So they've got to be prepared to go on so that there's not too much lag in between each of them. Already, um, the chat room is going crazy with yep. each presentation and loving all of the new yeah. ideas. Yeah, super cool. All right, cool. here we go. Okay, we've got our next... A little bit about the wearable home. There's a problem in every house in the home automation space, and that is they want you to take your phone from room to room to room to turn on your lights. I got tired of that. I think those are dumb lights. We didn't want to do that anymore. That's a major problem. So what do we want to do? We want a solution. Integrate any BLE-enabled wearable device, no matter what it is, into the home so that you can control the basic task of your home from your wearable device. Technologies we're using for this, and the Intel Edison folks were very helpful. We love them. Uh, the Pebble, which is a very nice little smartwatch we've been using for that. We got that here. Thanks for the swag, Pebble. Love it. Uh, the Nordic Board Gimbal Devices, BLE, native iOS, and we love all of the AT&T APIs and everybody, and they were uh, wonderful to work with to get all this done. So what we're going to do is we're going to show it. Charles, tell them what's going on here. Okay, so one of the things that you want in a smart home is context, right? It's not enough, in particular if you have a, a watch like the Pebble, which is a, my favorite watch of all, 
but I have to do a lot of work to get to it, you know, down, dive into menus and stuff. So we thought of a uh, context based proximity and gestures. So what we've done is we've actually used the Nordic semiconductor uh, kit to detect the presence of Bluetooth low energy to detect proximity. And then we actually are using the Intel Edison to communicate that proximity through the Intel Edison up the Wi-Fi into M to X, which we then have a huge spider web of flow going on. I love flow, it's awesome. Thank you guys so much for being up 24 hours with me. Um, and then of course into at t Digital Life. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use the Pebble watch to unlock the door. And so if I just, a simple gesture on my watch will unlock the door, which it should have done, you heard it. And so that's great, but what if I actually walk into a different room? Well, if I go into a different room, like let's say I go into my bedroom, I don't wanna lock the door, I wanna turn the light on. So I use the same gesture to turn the light on and to turn the light off. And so context, plus gestures equals turning not, not maybe not so smart watch into a very, very smart watch by moving everything into the AT&T cloud. Good. Yeah. Thanks. Awesome. So that's kind of the idea of it behind it. So what are we doing? The, 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 the smarts of this is in the AT&T cloud. It terms of just the interface of the watch based on where you are in the house, your location, your proximity, your presence determines what it's going to do. So it's key intelligence move to the cloud. All BLA enabled devices can do it location wise and controlling these edge devices. The last little corner case that we put together was what if my five year old daughter doesn't have a wearable device that she bought for $200, right? Uh, and but I want to control things for her too. come here, Charles, and hold a microphone for me so I can show this. So in her world, she loves here. Hold this. What she loves is the uh, is her little toy, right? So when she goes to bed at night, she sits her toy beside the lamp, which just is representative of the lamp and the lamp is off. But if she takes the toy away and pulls it into her bed, if she gets scared in the middle of the night, then the lamp will come on, right? So you can see the lights lighting up here. So the proximity using gimbal device, using the M2X system and then pushing this out, we can actually turn things off back and forth through the lights. So you bring it back together, the light goes back off. That is something for children to be able to use in the same context, introducing you to the wearable home. Love you guys, thanks. <laughs> Oh, I love this. That is really cool, Can you imagine actually. we walk into the room with our phone, and if you hold it up, it turns the light on. Right. right. Or, 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 but, or and I love the, the integration with kids' devices. It's not They're not trying to create a device yeah. that you have to sell yeah. over and over and over. Right. Use they're whatever to do the you already have. Correct. Yeah, that is very, very cool. That works out really well. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and, the <laughs> Still calling people at the moment. Um, so yeah, I mean, the idea of gesture control has been around for a while. Oh, um, actually, we're getting started we? with the next one. You got to hold that thought. Anyways. Um, there we are. All right. We're ah. personal black box. Well, that's our project. Um, it's a tracking system. It tracks how you drive, the, the health of your car, and in case of accidents, the surrounding cars. So we record and detect speed, acceleration, tilt, collision, and many other data points that give you a full diagnostic of the health of your car. So in a case of an accident, um, we are able to identify the Bluetooth IDs of all the surrounding vehicles so that you have access, or you're able to find later your witnesses or perpetrators. So let's say you're driving around in your car. Ooh, along with your family and your friends, you know, just driving along, and oh wait, there's somebody that's around, you know, on the side of the road, and they T-bone you, and bam, you crash, and you bam, and so as you see, oh, yep, we have a tablet. Go ahead. So, can you put the tablet up on the screen? We have on here a collision report. So go ahead. Um, where it actually. Yeah, so this is on the, the AT&T drive, so this is in your dashboard, right? So it detects the sensor from here. So the, the, the sensors that are on your car actually upload to MT, M2X, and then back down to here, as well as within drive, within drive, the drive API from, from AT&T, you can get all of the car's vital information, what the engine's doing, whether you hit the brakes, what the RPM is, all that data. We take all that data and then we upload it to the cloud. And, well, and I don't need you for the device. Uh, and the actual call, the WebRTC, makes that phone call from it. So as I'm right here wanting to click on this, uh, connect the call, 
it's going to make that connection to whatever the emergency phone call number is. And in fact, right in my back pocket is the phone call coming in. And I'll get some nice feedback right here. Uh, so as we are going along, it automatically connects to all that information along with this over the M dot connectivity. So go ahead, Matt, why don't you talk about that? Sure. Uh, so we kind of had to make do, my name's Matt, we had to make do with what we could scrounge up, right? So uh, we've got a base board uh, by Freescale. It's the Freedom board. Uh, it's an Arduino based board. Uh, we're using the Seed Glove uh, Grove Shield and a few sensors from there. Uh, and for the networking, uh, we were lucky enough to find some, some great networking. Um, Closer. Yep, yep. Can you all hear me now? Yes. Um, uh, we've got, uh, this is a long range network, it's actually got a five kilometer range. Uh, so from the baseboard we're getting accelerometer data, three axis accelerometer, as well as compass data. Um, and we also have a collision sensor. Uh, there's a number of other sensors that could be easily integrated like gyroscopes and things like that. Uh, and most importantly, the Bluetooth side of things, which is something that no other device does. Um, so can we, can we switch back to the laptop? Please. Okay. So all this data is being collected um, up on M2X, and this is a collection of the Bluetooth IDs that are around you in this time of an accident that you just saw. Um, you click on it, you query, there, there's your fingerprints, okay? You have that information to go track down that bastard that just hit and run you. And yep. everything else, the map of the route that you ta you've taken, your car health, you, the speed that you were going at, the acceleration, um, what fuel you had left in your engine, it's all here, it's all listed. And, and the most important thing about this is not just collecting data about your car and your driving, but the environment around you, so you can actually listen to all the other radios around and know who actually could be there to help you out. Thank you. All right, big round of applause, please. Personal black box. That is really that cool. That is really cool. If you take the idea of a plane and the black box in a plane, which that is the only thing that survives. Oh, and here we go. And Another one. about letting modern tech savvy moms and dads and other family members take care of the, the youngest and eldest in the family. Um, so what happens is the caretaker installs this sort of management app and they add uh, the people they're helping here. So I've added my son and my granddad. And then um, a call will come through to the son's phone, for example. Um, and then the management app will uh, bring up uh, who exactly is calling, and we can improve it and uh, cancel it. Meanwhile, we also detect things like driving speed, which you'll see later. So here comes the, the incoming call to the son's phone, but oh, my management phone got it, and I can detect um, if that's good to let it go through or not. In this case, I know his aunt is in Ohio, so it's okay to let it go. And there, uh, the call connected right on the son's phone. The, the other most basic functionality is just um, stopping a call. Um, you might think this is kind of troublesome, but um, in this case, we're just going to use a wearable, so I never even have to take my phone out of my pocket. So in this case, I blocked the call um, just using my cool Samsung smartwatch. We use the White Pages Pro API to show a spam uh, rating so you won't have your grandpa called by like any uh, pharmacies trying to sell them weird drugs or anything. <laughs> um, and the most amazing uh, technology we have by Sandra is uh, the AT&T Drive API. You can detect when, say, a teenager is driving at speed. Uh, could you please um, turn the speed up? And now our system will block all calls from moving into either the management app or the, uh, the care taken app automatically. And we're doing a voice call here, but this applies to text as well. So the call just um, ends. And if you could um, put us back in park uh, so uh, the next things uh, will work. Um, our most advanced feature is that we can also connect a call into conference. So if a doctor is calling grandpa, then we can connect a three-way call. 
And for this, we're going to use the WebRTC API as well from uh, AT&T. And this way, if a doctor calls grandpa, then we pick this add me option, and the call will connect all three of us, and I can learn how to help that uh, grandpa use his pacemaker. The, the call is going to connect through uh, audio in WebRTC here. And we have some other awesome stuff, like uh, measuring if the garage doors are left open using AT&T uh, M2X. And here's the call now. I don't know if you heard the ringtone. Nice, there's the echo. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. You know, I actually really dig that because we've seen a lot of um, parent and teen yeah. and kid phone systems, mm -hmm. um, but this actually kind of takes it a step further yeah. and allows a lot more integration, which I is like really I like the cool. example of having a doctor call and, and being able to intercept it and auto, auto connect it into a conference exactly. call. Exactly. Like if you have elderly parents, the doctor's going to call and tell them something. You know you well, need to go well, pick up their meds. The, you need something, and they're never going to tell you. Or something, oh, yeah, you know, that's a whole they're problem. never going to remember. Okay, here's another one. Uh, we'll come to educate. Um, education for all. Um, as an educator myself, um, I see that the current educational system um, lapses in technology a lot of time to um, enable um, uh, interactive sort of engaging experiences for all. Educate um, is an application platform that um, enables those missing experiences, um, addressing the affordability issues to um, underprivileged um, students as well as um, underfunded um, educational institutions um, around the world. So Educate is an app equipped on Alcatel OneTouched. It is one app with two user modes. Um, here we see there, um, I'm uh, logged in as a, as a student and uh, Elsa, who's my instructor here, and uh, she's at the instructor mode. We're going to log in right now. As you can see, now the app takes us to the list of all of the nearest educate um, rooms near us, um, including um, the one that Elsa has um, previously created. Um, we're going to join it uh, at the same time. OK, so as we can see here, now my name is going to be popping up pretty soon. And the same thing with Alsa's uh, tablets as well. Um, now, this Educate um, application platform addresses three value propositions. And we're proposing the first one being uh, the ability to share contents, right? The sharing of, of, of digital contents cannot be easier through Educate. Um, it's simple and it's intuitive. So as an instructor, I want to share some information with my student. And I just click the Share document button. And as you see, that I have a few photos. And I want to share with uh, my uh, students a cool Yorkie photo. This is actually um, my dog. <laughs> right. As she's, as she's swiping that contents over to me, you can see that an accountant is available on my tablets because we're in proximity of each other. Um, as, as such, I can download the application. Uh, the, the content being shared with me, I can share it on multiple um, um, media, um, as well as emailing the content to myself. And notice the interactions here is both ways. I can also share the content back to her. And these content do not necessarily entail photos, but uh, videos and other contents as well. The second proposition is remote learning. And this is very important, distant learning um, for underprivileged students, or people who don't have the means to, through WebRTC and sponsored data, uh, we offer them the ability to interact with the teachers uh, directly. Um, and the last mode is that, you know, after I wrap up the class, I want to throw a few questions for my students and see how they react, you know, to the class today. So let's play a Jeopardy game. I think she's about to ask me a question there. Okay, well, the question is, what is the average weight of a Yorkshire Terrier? As you can see in my tablets here. Um, well, there's the easy button. I think I want to know what the answer is. Let me press it. All right, so this is a type system, which means she's going to be able to get, to, oh, there we go. All right, so, so the answer is eight, eight pounds. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, so, yeah. Um, lastly, we just wanted to mention a couple of the next steps. Um, we intend to take these ideas even further by building minimum viable products um, to um, uh, enable 
more, more than just two tablets. We're talking about more than three, having all of these uh, tablets together, creating more of a collaborative learning experience. One example would be creating a jizzle puzzles or maybe some, you know. Some like a maze, you know, connect two, three tablets and we have like a big map to share and people can try to, you know, find the answers or find the route by solving a few questions right. together. Such, such is possible only with more tablets. Um, that's what we intend to do to create this fun, engaging curriculum. Thank you very much. Thank you. To see uh, apps targeted at underprivileged, underdeveloped um, uh, systems, right? Um, so that that's really cool, actually. That that whole sharing of information and quizzing. I've seen bits and pieces of it, but not put together like that. Yeah, being able to join a room and have one person push it out to as many people who want to get exactly. connected to that information. Yeah. With the built-in Q&A kind of quizzing and uh -huh. things like that. Very cool. Exactly. Now, the chat room was commenting zone out is up next. But um, so a couple of mentions in the chat room, a lot of presentations are using WebRTC. And that yep. is one of the platforms available to them to um, work on while here at the uh, Developer Hackathon. So there are a lot of experts from WebRTC. That is an AT&T uh, platform. And, or, I'm sorry, not an AT&T developer platform. But it, they are. there are a lot of experts here available trying from to it, yep. talk to. Um, There's also dozens of other APIs that are available. I mean, so it's it's interesting. We're, we're seeing a wide variety of different kinds of applications. Exactly. I mean, we've, we've seen quadcopters flying right. on stage. We've we saw seen people apps. We've seen physical swiping their their, <laughs> their, their, their 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 wrist and making Gesture a door control. Um, open, yeah. you know. And Gesture control combined with home automation. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. <laughs> a lot of this stuff is uh, is really innovative. Um, a lot of times, you know, you, you get some really cool innovation and creativity when you look at things that are already happening. Yep. And so you never want to just shut yourself out to the well, idea of using it's really something that's there. Right? Correct. All right, here we've got one more. Yep. Watch. It's a self-contained app that allows you to create and share adventures that you have when you're out and about, whether or not someone wants to follow them or trace them in real time or to just browse them leisurely. So using the watch, we can navigate into the app itself and we'll explore some of the local adventures that are taking place in the Las Vegas area around us. So one of the first things we'll see, um, and it's hard to see on the big screen, is in the orange bar here, one of our team members snuck out on us last night and went down to the strip. Um, <laughs> Rami has shared his adventure with us, so we can click the orange bar there and, and check it out. Now these, these can be captured in real time, they can be planned in advance, or they can be remembered after the fact. And in this case, Rami started his adventure right here at the Palms, and every time a location is tagged using the Esri mapping system, we can embed video, images, and audio into those tags, and we capture all this data together uh, in M2X. So here at the Palms, we can swipe over to the right and automatically get an audio recording that he left for us. So then we can follow his path. From here at the Palms, we can go to the next stop, and we'll use Esri mapping to get us down to the Bellagio. And for the purposes of this demo, we're going skip to the, skip the pathing around from location to location, but we want to show you a bunch of the different kinds of data and experiences you can capture at each of these locations. So when we go to the Bellagio, our friend Rami captured a video of the Fountain Show. Now, of course, the watch itself doesn't capture video or still photography. It does capture audio. So we have it paired with a Samsung phone that can do these things. The watch will request the media, and the, and the phone can provide. It can also capture galleries of photos, in this case, from the conservatory at the Bellagio. And this, this actually is what he did last night. These are not like Google images. He really left us and went to the strip and did this. And go on to the next one. I love that polar bear. And because you can't take pictures everywhere, again, we capture audio. You can't take pictures in the poker room at Caesars, for instance, but we can capture audio bragging about it. Here we are at Caesars Palace. No cameras in the poker room, so that's all I got for you now. Feel free to join me when you guys wrap up early. 
But where we really see the value of this is in sponsored content. So when Rami got back here, he went over to Ghostbar, and Ghostbar can, uh, can provide sponsored content, for instance, for their bottle service. Um, this is really where we think a product like this has legs. Uh, premium content can be distributed that would allow individual locations and paths in malls, at conferences and stuff like that, to offer coupons, to offer special deals, and of course, for users to pay for this information. And it's all accessible on the watch. The watch is a self-contained device, um, and we can respond and share and create our own. Thank you very much. I like the ability to basically right, me right, go right, somewhere right, and you follow along exactly yeah. in my path yeah. using GPS, photos, audio, right. uh, video. That has a lot of potential. And here we go with another one. Okay. Uh, it's an amazing Haxon. But there is someone that I'm really missing when I'm here in the Haxon. It's my dog. So there's so many people um, have, a, have a pets, have a dog, cats, but they have to leave their pets at home, uh, especially sometimes they, they even go vacation, they only have some friend to walk the dog for them, but they don't know what the dog is doing at home. So that's we, why we built the Pet Alone app. So the, with the Pet Alone app, with this app running, uh, I'm able to whistle my dog to see if my dog can come to um, the dog house uh, with the Pet Alone device. Hold on, come on, WebRTC. So, doc, can you respond? <laughs> uh, actually, the doc do not really need to respond. It's going to automatically respond. Hey, hey, buddy, are you doing good? Are you doing good? <laughs> so, uh, I'm in the hack zone, but I'm going to give you a treat. Wait, wait a second, I'm going to give you a treat. Um, so, the treat is over here. So let's, let's give another treat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is just a proof of concept. But actually, this is something that I really feel is useful. Um, because when I home alone, uh, when, when I li li leave my dog home alone, I'm actually using FaceTime, FaceTime to call my dog. My dog actually can see me and can respond to my command. So this, what we build is actually like a FaceTime for dogs and with some treatment that remotely. Uh, with this product alone, we build with uh, WebRTC, we build with, uh, um, and also one more thing. We also have sensors attached to the device. If your dog is really highly intelligent, intelligent they probably figure out and they try to pull down everything and then get all the treat. But we have this covered. We have the, uh, we have the wonder, uh, wonder Band. Um, have the sensors, we can collect the temperature, humidity, and also the gyroscope to figure out if the dog already turned your, turn this device upside down. Uh, so that's it. Thanks. You know, we've seen some dog treat uh, apps like this Dispensaries. Uh, before, but nothing that's really come to market in a big way. But this one, I like the sensor that's, that stops the uh, multiple treats. I also like the fact that it whistles like it get, you, you basically train the dog. Whistle. It uses Pavlov's theory, okay? I mean, you basically yes, you does. train the dog so that when the dog hears whatever the trigger noise right. is, they come running over. They're looking and they're just sitting there waiting. They're waiting. Right? They're waiting. They're and then you know. can talk to them and then they can look at the screen. <laughs> it's it, like he says, FaceTime for dogs. It is. It's a but good way to describe it. Well, you, it would work I on mean, me. That's what they're saying in the chat room, actually. Can yeah. we get John to do this with a gummy bear every time this, you nail a I segment? I would. I would. So. It, it would work. <laughs> okay, here we go. Next here one. So uh, we are part of C2M team, and we are presenting an application called One. One stands for On Network Entity. So the biggest challenge we have that we are more connected than ever, but you know we still do not interact with our devices the same way as we interact with humans, people around us. And then what happens? Those devices go into your shelves, your boxes, and then you really don't, you know use them as they should be used. So what we have tried to do with this simple mobile app is we have tried to create objects, uh, connected objects, innate objects to be interactive with us as humans. So my colleagues here, Ryan and Marine, are going to demonstrate the application. 
uh, by using an example of a uh, pineapple. So uh, after this presentation, we are going to convert that into margaritas. So if anybody is interested, come by. Okay. Thanks, Thanks Yasser. So one of the other things that we did is uh, we tried to take a mo multimodal approach. So we wanted to be able to interact with the devices through text, through speech, as well as through gestures. So doing that, we integrated with the Watson speech API, and we also um, were integrating with the Samsung watch for using the, uh, the gesture motion. <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and interact with this pineapple over here that we put together. What's your name? Her name was Lola. She was a showgirl with yellow feathers in her hair and a dress cut down her lash. All right, so that's one call. And what I'll do is I'll, we've, we've got an agriculture sensor here which is feeding in live data. So I'll go ahead and ask it another question. My soil moisture is 43.57. Please help and not a cactus. Right. So we've actually created a dynamic way. So based on the parameters of the device, you can actually configure uh, responses. So what it's doing, it's looking for two things. One, the parameter, in this case, soil moisture, but also the time frame, like time, uh, today, yesterday, last week, that type of thing. So one of the other things we did was we integrated with the Fitbit API, and I'll go ahead and show that. So this is my account here, my Fitbit app. How many steps have I taken today? I said, how many steps have I taken today? Ninety-eight hundred steps. Careful, the Olympics are not this year. Right. <laughs> so we're connecting both with the devices as well as uh, some APIs as well. Okay. All right. Next up, we have. Oh. Dude. They're, they no keep coming that. very Ooh. quickly. Ooh, I talked to these guys. This is actually cool, dude. <laughs> they're they're my all steps? been cool. I know. I know. Everything is cool. I'm just excited <laughs> by all of them. All right, dude. <laughs> Where's my steps? Hi, I'm Charlie, and this is Aaron and Gabriel. Um, so we developed a wearable fitness app for the everyday commuter. Um, so we built this app because the average American commutes 50 minutes a day. And if you're sitting in your car, sitting in a chair, you know that you're not doing a whole lot of exercise. So if we can make that a little bit easier for you and, you know, decrease some of these health issues that you may encounter. I'm not threatening you guys, but I'm just saying that sometimes these things may occur and if you want to decrease your odds of, you know, this stuff happening. So what we built was, um, dude, where is my... Steps. Yes for finding a parking spot that will put you out a little bit further from your destination so that you can in, um, increase your odds of reaching your daily goal for um, reaching your daily step count, which is pretty simple, pretty easy. Um, and at the end of the day, you'll feel better about yourself. So the way it works is that you get into your car, you put it in your destination, and it'll automatically sync with your smartwatch, and it has your goal for the day, and from there, it'll kind of calibrate between 500 to 2,000 feet from the destination. So we're not trying to put you like a mile out so you're sweating when you get going to work. Um, so we're making it reasonable, incre incremental. So what you do is like you click on um, a parking spot and it'll automatically set that as your destination. Um, 
And then from there, um, what? Oh, are we switching? Okay. Yeah, hi. So the, 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 in the demo, we have the app, which looks like this, which is meant to be running in the dashboard. And you have a list of parking spaces. And we also have a map view of the radius around your destination of the parking spaces that will help you reach your step goal. Uh, if we could switch to the, the camera, please. So this is the actual dashboard. We're having some connectivity issues with the tablet, unfortunately. But uh, the app that you just saw in the browser is the same exact app that would be running here if our connection was working. All of the data is streamed to M2X. And we also have this fitness tracker on the S that we implemented that keeps track of our, keeps track of our step goal for us. And that streams data to MTEX as well. All that data comes back down into the dashboard app, helping the driver stay fit and re reach their step goals. We use the map, uh, Esri API for mapping, and all the data is sponsored data through uh, AT&T APIs. Okay. So basically what happens is that when you reach your parking spot destination... Sorry. Can we go back to the computer, please? Okay. When you reach your parking spot destination... Um, and you get out of your car, your smartwatch will then know how many steps away from your destination you are, and then it'll start counting down. But then your goal will start counting up because you're reaching closer towards your goal. And so at the end of the day, you'll feel better. And best of all, by using sponsored data, the, all the data that's coming in and coming out is for free. So commuting is not limited to work. So there are many applications where we can use this. If you travel a lot for airplanes, you can increase your fitness using this app. Um, if you're on the train, you can maybe get off at a stop or two earlier. Um, if you're an enterprise, you can set the, you know, the companies. Um, maybe you guys can cons um, consider setting up a competition between like a group of workers. And last but not least. Sweet. Dude. Thank you. Uh, I really, I really like that. Um, it's very creative. I mean, it is. It, you have to actually use it, which is the thing. So you have to be active in that. But I like that you could do it with trains um, as well as not, n not just your car. Yeah, I mean, it's so. just going to help you reach your your fitness goals for exactly. the day. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, I, I especially think if you already have a Samsung watch, like I broke mine actually on our trip. But if I already have that watch, <laughs> it's going to help you. You know. Right. All right. Here comes Here another. How many people here are Airbnb users? All right. We probably got some guests in the crowd and some hosts in the crowd. If you're hosts, you know how complicated it is running around town, exchanging keys, helping out your guests. What we've created as Team Colorado is Host Magic. Host Magic takes the best of the AT&T Digital Life product and makes it even more awesome. We thought we weren't allowed to use slides today, so all we're gonna do is demo. I hope that's cool. We got two killer features to get through. We're gonna start here. We got Mike, he's on the Host Magic dashboard. He's logging in, and in a second, he's gonna set up a reservation for a guest. What this allows is time boxed, access limited control of his connected home. Can we switch over to the uh, mobile device, please? Uh, so, and that, this is going to send a text message automatically. We, uh, we send? Okay, so he's setting up, putting in a phone number, a time box, and a name. And we're going to see this go over. Uh, so once the text message shows up, it's going to give a prompt to download the native iOS app that we built, Welcome Guest. There's going to be an authentication token. You can see it on the right there. That's the guest phone. We already downloaded the app. So now he's inside the app, and here's the property he's visiting. Now he has control of the door lock and the light in the house. So one of the killer features we added is proximity triggers. This works using iBeacons. So we have Sam over here who brought the door to us because we can't go over the door and still be on the video. And once he gets close, without having to put down his groceries or bags, the door just popped open. And so that's really cool. The front door is now unlocked. There we go. Uh, in addition, as cool as that is for the guest, it's sweet for the host as well. As you can see here, the host got a text message that says the guest has checked in. In addition, there's a picture of all you beautiful people 
from one of those cameras over there. I'm not sure which one. Uh, okay, so now we have a second killer feature. What we've done is taken the M2X platform and added the ability to have sensors up to 10 miles away from the house. So the Digital Life platform is really awesome, but we're extending it outside the home. Here we have an example of controlling a light. In this example, we're using a motion sensor. You guys all know there are tons of sensors. There's breathalyzers. Really, the world's the limit for what you can do with this technology. And when we walked around the last 24 hours and talked to people about this idea, there were people who were really excited about it and gave us even more ideas, like Esri geofencing. As a guest approaches their Airbnb rental, the garage door automatically opens. Uh, other ideas include uh, being able to request from your host what items are going to be available for you with a payment API. And anything else share? Let me wrap this up here, list off some technologies we use. We did use IBM Bluemix deployment. And, all right. and so in summary, we're Team Colorado. We built Host Magic to allow hosts to be in two places at once, maximizing their income potential and guest, cus guest customer satisfaction. We did it by leveraging AT&T and AT&T partner services on top of the Digital Life product suite. Host magic. We amplify host and guest delight. Thank you. Now that's innovative because you could you can always put home automation on your own home. Correct. But when you leave your home, you don't get to take it with you. You don't. You don't. But being able to log in and have somebody else's control, that's very cool. Now right. both parties have to be able My to integrate yeah. stands for myocardial that, infarction. So. We've been playing right, here comes the wearables next. in the enterprise, uh, and we really like the NIMI band. It's a biometric identity device meant for authenticating you from computer to computer, which is interesting, but we came up with an even better idea. Yeah, so we hacked it. <laughs> this device is actually really cool. What it actually does is it monitors your heart rate, but it does it with telemetry, not beats per minute. When I mean telemetry, I'm talking about an actual waveform like you'd see if you were hooked up to an EKG machine at the hospital. Cool thing about hacking this device, we wrote some code for it, and this thing is actually monitoring your heart rate 24 hours a day, seven days a week, as long as you have this band on. In honesty, I went, to the doctor. To I went to the doctor three weeks ago. Sorry about that. Went to the doctor three weeks ago. He tells me, you know, Paul, you're 48 years old. He says, you know, you probably haven't been eating well. Your triglycerides are up. I'm going to put you on Lipitor. And, you know, chances of you having a heart attack are pretty good. So you want to watch, you know, your lifestyle from now on. Actually scared the crap out of me. So coming to the hackathon, thinking for ideas, we actually found this little device, which is just made really to authenticate you into your Windows machine instead of you typing in a password. So now we actually have a device that monitors my heart. If it stops or goes into a fibrillation, where the heart is actually just fibrillating, where you'd need an actual electrical shock to get your heart to beat again, this thing will actually go through our API, uh, AT&T's SMS API, it will actually text message EMS. I will have an ambulance on the way without any interaction, pushing any buttons, nothing. Something's monitoring me all the time. Let's if I'm alone, if I'm in my bedroom asleep, nobody's there with me, if I happen to have a heart attack in my sleep, it will actually, again, send for an ambulance. It will text message everybody that I actually put into the system. Loved ones, family, everybody's gonna know that this has happened. Basically, I'm not alone. Someone's coming for me to save my life. So I feel confident with that. I just want to demonstrate what the actual rhythm, this is my heart rhythm, normal. This is what happens when you actually have a heart attack. And this is what actually happens when your heart goes into V-fib, where you actually need an electrical shock to get the muscle pumping again, hopefully. And what I want to do is demonstrate by rapidly tapping this so I could show you that the text messaging API actually will work and send a message to the cell phone letting us know that it is actually working. We'll send the text message to anybody we input. This is actually simulating the fibrillation of your heart. There's the text message. It's giving latitude and longitude of my location, sending it to EMS. Well, not, we don't want an ambulance coming now, but it will if I tell it to. So they're going to know exactly where I'm at. We're also using Ezra technology, which is also going to pinpoint the nearest hospital to me. So if it is a loved one that's getting me, they know exactly where the nearest hospital is, and this is going to map the direction. 
So with the instructions involved on the cell phone in the text message, I really have a chance if anything happens. And anybody who hasn't been eating right and you're in your 40s, you know, for 129 bucks, it's a good solution to a $50,000 surgery. If you're, you know, at risk to actually have a monitor input uh, through surgery and a battery that needs to cha be changed again in three years for surgery again. 129 bucks, save your life. Again, this is the NIMI, and uh, we're gonna be pushing forward with this technology. One thing we're gonna do is we're gonna save lives. We're gonna take the statistics out of uh, heart attack deaths, and I really think this is gonna do it. Thanks, guys, I really appreciate it. Right. Also, just a couple more things for Enterprise. Please let, this is a really cool device. Please let me uh, sure. let, embellish a little bit with my partner. Yeah. Let, let's switch back to the, to the slideshow, great. So here's how it works. Uh, you take the time series heartbeat data from the uh, smart wristband, uh, you go over Bluetooth to the phone where you can analyze the data in real time, you can look for VFib, you can look for VTAC, and then you can push those events up to the M2X servers and out using the SMS APIs to loved ones, to uh, nurses and doctors if they're uh, in the hospital for enterprise applications, or we can have a module for the consumer market that will let 911 know. So we've got both markets targeted here, both, both the enterprise for hospitals uh, and for the consumer market. Police, fire, military, there's so many uses for this and we really are passionate about this. We want to save lives. We're using too much time. Guys, thank you so much for listening to us. We really appreciate it. That one is awesome. Okay, before we go there, that one is really, really cool. As, as Neojun in the chat room says, it's a powerful use of a body tracker. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you take the fitness tracker to a whole new level and do something that actually no one on the market is doing. No. Just using yeah, already why not, on the market stuff. Why not detect not only a beat, but whether or not the beat is regular. Exactly. Right? And then exactly. if it is regular and the thing's connected, you might as well make the uh, make the call to the emergency Correct. medical services. It, why would every, you? <laughs> every smart device, every smart watch that could do heart rate detection could incorporate that technology. That is a look into the future. Yeah, that, that's that, really cool. That's actually one of my favorites. Okay, here we go. Here's here another go. one. Morning. He's ready to get some sleep. That's right. That guy is. So as a new parent, something I'm very passionate about is finding quality caregivers for my children and also my pets and also my house. Today, the market, it's saturated with products like care.com, things that really don't manage the process end to end. It's a $14.7 billion industry, and we feel like it's ripe for disruption. It grows at an annual rate of about 1% a year. So over the last 24 hours, we've taken advantage of all the wonderful APIs that at and and their partners have to offer us, and we've built an app called Sitter. Cool, so uh, thank you, Jeremy, for that. Uh, super excited to be here with you guys. Uh, we spent the last 24 hours really racking our brains, uh, hitting them against the wall, trying to make sure all this stuff works. So uh, without further ado, this is Sitter. Um, there's three use cases and, and three parts of the industry that we really do uh, dove into. Uh, it's babysitting, it's house sitting, and it's pet sitting. So you get the, the uh, generic Sitter name from that. So I'm gonna jump right into the babysitting portion of this. I wanna hire somebody for tonight. I've got a date from six o'clock until 10 o'clock and I need to have uh, my kids make sure that they're actually looked after. So at the top here, you'll see that there's a filter. I can hit this little down arrow here, and that'll give me additional filters so I can change the date, the time. I can change the minimum number of a star rating for, uh, for the uh, caregivers. Um, and so it's hard, a little bit hard to see here, but this is an Esri map with some pins overlaid. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna select one of these pins, um, and it's gonna pull up a profile of that sitter. And you can see here it's Jeremy Lizza. Uh, he's got a four-star rating, but he's only done one sit before through this mobile app. So we're going to go ahead and check out. There's a, a watch video bio. So we've leveraged some of at and sponsored data here to uh, preview Jeremy's bio. Hi, Jeremy. I love kids. Let me take care of yours. <laughs> Probably don't want to pick me to watch your kids. <laughs> yes. So that was kind of, uh, kind of creepy. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to close out of him. We're going to pass. Sorry, Jeremy. Um, I'm going to select another caregiver here from one of these pins. Uh, and we have Amanda here. She's got five stars. She's had 47 sits. She's 28. She doesn't have a pre-recorded video. But what we can do is we can actually perform a video interview. So if you can flip the screen over. Okay. 
So the screen isn't working, or you can hold it underneath. Yep. So we're going to launch one of the, uh, the video. It's a WebRTC video, so that way we can actually validate um, and ask any questions we want to of this interviewer. So give this a minute to connect. I know we've have been having some issues with the Wi-Fi here. So um, yeah, I need to click connect. There we go. Yep. So here comes the call incoming. We'll go ahead and answer the call. And there we see Amanda. Hi. Cool. So Jeremy's going to go ahead and hang that up. Um, the last thing that we want to show you is uh, the checkout process. So after you check out, you're actually giving the caregiver access to your house, ATT Digital Life. So if the, care, uh, the caregiver has um, access to that house during that window, that you had selected. So as I walk over here to the Digital Life House, um, I'm going to actually get the list of devices that I have access to, and it's going to unlock the door over here. Assuming that it's configured. There we go, and it's unlocking. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. There are. Uh, there's a whole world of uh, house sitters and babysitters and right, pet sitter uh, yes. sites out there, but none of them integrate yes. all of these different features. It's also like eBay, where you get to rate people. Yeah. All right, here's another one. Staying here at the uh, Palms Resort. Cool, and how many other hotels in Vegas? So, quite a few people staying here. So, how many people have thought about how much energy you use in the hotel room? Well, believe it or not, last year, just in the US alone, $7.5 billion was spent from hotels using electricity and lights in, uh, electricity, lights and water in the hotel room. And we believe we've got a revolutionary solution that's going uh, to address that. So we're introducing Green Guest. So Green Guest is a mobile app that you, uh, you download and you install. And uh, how many people use TripIt? Cool, good, good number. Great. So uh, what we've done is we've integrated with the TripIt API. So here I am, I'm a new guest, and uh, I'm going to check into my hotel here at the Palms. And what it's going to do is it's going to go over to the dollhouse here, which is our simulated hotel room, and it's going to look at all of the energy that's being used in the hotel room. So I'm going to ask Chris to turn on the, uh, the light there, and we should see that kilowatt hour start to, uh, start to uh, increase up as we're using... Uh, uh, the uh, energy and electricity in the room. Um, we've also got a water sensor. So we put one of these devices in the tank, in the toilet. And uh, when it detects water, when you flush, I'm going to hope this is going to work. We should see some gallons being used. There we go. We're starting to use some water as we're flushing. And then finally, we've been working with the Wonderbar team to actually develop the first smart sensor for towels. So you know how it goes. You, you get up in the morning, you take a shower, you take a towel off the rack, start to dry. What do you do with the towel? You throw it on the ground. And then what happens is house cleaning come later in the, in the uh, morning. They bring you a fresh towel. They put it on the uh, smart, uh, smart towel. We're looking at the luminosity of the towel. You can see that we've just used another towel here. So we've got a great consumer experience, but we've also extended this to the hotel management as well. So as a hotel manager, you can look at all of your rooms. You can see what is happening here. So I'm going to zoom in on the, on the room here. We can look at water usage. And we can also get alerts. So here, someone's checked out of the room, but they've left the light on. So what do we do? Well, we can be God mode. We can say, hey, we were going to save energy for the, uh, for the hotel here. I'm going to turn this off. And the light goes off. So finally, so this is, this is kind of interesting, but how do we incentivize people to use this? Well, we're in Vegas, so we've added some gamification. So not only can you track your usage, but you can play games with other people in the hotel. So how does my usage compare with my colleagues? Uh, Chris is beating me. He's in 8266. How does it compare with other floors or other hotels? And of course, if I beat the hotel number, I've got a number of globes here. I actually, uh, when I check out, 
I'm eligible for rewards. So I've just got a new reward here. I got $50 off my next stay. We've actually integrated with Concur Expense as well. So here's my, uh, who uses Concur? There we go, quite a few hands. I'm gonna do a refresh here. And here's my credit for my next stay straight into my expense account. So how did we build this? We use Digital Life. We build a bridge to go from the Digital Life sensors straight into M2X. Uh, we use the phenomenal flow designer uh, to create a great flow and a bunch of business logic uh, together with the Wonderbar uh, device. And then finally, just a business model. We're trying to get the whole thing under $100 per room, per hotel room. We're going to sell it using a subscription model with a money back guarantee. If you as a hotel do not save energy, you get the equipment for free. Thank you. Wow. Nice. <laughs> Uh, integration between I gotta say, the hotel guest and the management company. The number one thing I was thinking was this is going to require a huge amount of infrastructure, and that's going to cost a lot of money. Right. And these these, these hotels sentence. might not want to make that investment. Right, right. But if you went to them and said, we guarantee you're going to save your money, you're going to get it back. Right. That could work. Yep, right. indeed. Could work. Okay. Uh, my be best cool. friend is about to come up or soon. Um, the one thing I was thinking was if you have pets as a guest and the hotel management comes in and, like, and turn off turns all off of the lights on your room. Um, that might be a little bit of an issue, but I'm sure there's a way of Well, they could uh, put other sensors that, in the room, you know, I mean, there could be, yeah, yeah, yeah. That you kind know. of thing, yeah. yeah. Plus, they're saying, you know, it, it's kind of one of those things where if, if it's apparent that someone has checked out of the room, you know, it, you could also do it like based yes, on times. Exactly. If somebody checked into a room in the evening and let's say it's still 6 a.m. the next morning but there hadn't been any things detected. Right. Well, also, though, remember, they now have the smart badges on the doors, so they know if That's you've true. been if you've going come in, in, yeah, or come out. in at a door, yeah. you know, so they could do all the door triggers right. plus everything else, fuzzy logic. I just really wouldn't want um, them to know how many towels I'm using, or myself. I don't really want to know how many towels I'm using because, um, you know, hotel towels are not exactly the best. Um, you're taking the towels home is what you're telling me. No, I'm not you're taking the You're telling me. What you're towels? telling me is you're collecting no. towels. You're collecting hotel towels. No. I just... <laughs> Right. Well, what's that extra bag for? Um, I okay. should stop talking I now. thought it was interesting, though, <laughs> that when he talked about the towel sensor, he said it would detect... Uh, what I thought I heard was something about, like, basically detecting the cleanliness of the towel. Like, I if it was a new towel or something. I what, did I get that wrong? Yeah, he's, uh, he's the luminosity, a, the luminosity okay. right? So, like, if you're filthy right. and you take a shower and you the towel's <laughs> dirty, and they know, well, that's a dirty towel. But if it's been freshly cleaned, All then... Right. Uh, well, you know what? That would actually save you from having to put in those little notes in the hotel rooms. Yeah. Of, um, yeah if, uh, if you, if you want it clean, yeah. put it on the floor. If you don't, keep it up. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing. It would just detect which towels need to be washed. What would be, cool would be, be if washed. they could put, like, a... a, a a biological detector of some sort. <laughs> oh no, I'm serious. Like, it's just like, like germs, like a germ detector. Yeah. Or something. Then you could tell if the thing was clean or dirty based on like we if it had just implanted like in mold. every human being. Yeah, I know a few people that need one of those. Oh, ouch. Yeah. I'm sorry. I will stay further <laughs> away from you from now on, John. <laughs> so uh, I think they're getting set up for uh, some other ones. Um, but... Uh, well, I don't see anybody else walking over okay. there. I don't know. Oh, oh, okay. I don't know. I literally don't know. A oh, one more. There's maybe we have one more. One coming. more. Okay. I have no idea how many we've just watched. I don't either. I was or even saying, how long we've been hearing it because it just didn't seem like very long. No, they've been like on it. I've been impressed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <sighs> okay. <laughs> well, we've been going three and a half hours. So what? says Dave Curley. Wow. For just these pitches or the whole no. thing? For the, the whole, whole thing. thing. Three and okay. a half hours. Well, thanks, you guys, for sticking in with <laughs> yeah, us. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Uh, we have just a bit more to come, so don't go anywhere yet. And remember, if you missed any of these or if you want to go back and hear them, just go to geekbeat.tv slash ATT. Uh, all of this will be uh, living on at that link yeah. forevermore. What we'll do is... After the event, we'll go through. We'll trim out the pieces where nothing was happening, yep. and we'll create one, one you know, version of it that we will uh, upload so but that you guys can share in that. We won't trim out these versions. These uh, oh, these times. Oh, you don't uh, even have the gun. I don't know that where is the gun weak. is. Where's the gun? You throw like a girl. David took my gun. It's already loaded. Oh. And. Oh, oh, you hit it. Oh yeah. I can't believe you actually hit it. Dude. Where's my car? 
uh, steps. I mean, where's my steps? <laughs> and by the way, if you uh, want any more information about the AT&T Developer Summit and the hackathon, make sure you're going to developer.att.com so that you, uh, they have everything there. The video, geekbeat.tv slash att, all the information, and we'll link to it from both places. Also, you know Give what, you could, you could check out all the social stuff if you just uh, check out the uh, hashtag, hashtag, Pound ATT Hack. You know Some what? people have been using ATT Hackathon, but the official one is ATT Hack. Or ATT Dev Summit. That's another official one? Yes. But that's so long, and I might not know how to spell it. <laughs> the hashtags are a wonderful thing, aren't they? Because you can pretty much get anywhere with them. That is true. Let's see what the uh, chat room is saying. John, she's a girl. Ben, I why know, did I, you need to point that out? Of course I'm a girl. Because I made a little comment that I, you <laughs> felt like a girl, but um, no offense to any of the ladies. <laughs> You know, one of the things David that throws like a girl too. Right. Okay, so <laughs> one of the things that I've been very impressed with. Oh, oh final, final presentation. Final presentation. I'll tell you after. And we're home harmony. What does that mean? It's going to protect you the rest of your life, and it's going to protect you because you're the one in control of your life today. With every possible device that we have, and everybody here, thank you very much for all your support for everybody giving us services and we'll be discussing all other services. We created an app that has just jumped from my computer. Can I have your... It's the app, just give me the app. Turn it on. We've created an app that allows a single person or a family to live in their home by themselves, to be able to be protected by all those Samsung devices and all of those lights from Philips and being able to run on at and Digital Life and being able to use almost every single facility or every single component that's available in the marketplace. And you know who's going to do it? I am, because I'm a woman in tech. And I have all these guys building it for me. Aren't I lucky? So we have Aaron, Steve, and... Michael. Michael, <laughs> thank you. You know, it's not very easy. It's very difficult to be up here and actually talk and do this at the same time. But I want to tell you that all of these people have come together in a 24-hour period of time to be able to make our product complete. So when I've fallen, because I'm, as the team wants to tell me, hey, why don't you get up there, old lady, and you can actually fall and really make it look like something so that when you're all there by yourself and nothing happens, what's going to happen? Well, to me, my app that's monitoring my vitals every single day, it's monitoring whether I'm in good health or bad health. God forbid it lets my son call me. No. But it will tell him that, hey, I've fallen. And because I have an accelerometer on my wonderful, incredible Samsung device that's going to be able to say that I've fallen, it's going to be able to not only tell me what's going on, because I'm now unconscious and I have no idea what's going on, except for it's now sent out a message to the local fire department and police department and EMTs. It's being able to say to the EMTs two different things. It's being able to tell that it's going to map to TCS's mapping device that's going to be able to say, hey, I'm at 123 Hummingbird Lane and I'm in apartment B. But if I'm on 12 Hummingbird Lane and there's a, an apartment B in, in a zip code of 92101 instead of 192102, how do they know how to dispatch it to? Well, guess what? We're going to be able to dispatch it right from my device and right from my monitoring system that's being able to set it up. It's also going to be able to, once uh, the EMT and emergency comes down the street, my front porch light has been set up from those guys up there <laughs> from Octo Blues Group, and now that regular old... Um, front porch light is going to turn red and it's the only one on the block and the peace police are going to be able to know that that's where it is. So they're going to get there. They're going to get to my front door and my front door is of course totally locked because I have all of my doors, all of my windows. Oh, who is it? And it opens. And what's opening it? My home monitoring digital services is actually identifying and using white pages to be able to identify that that was the guy who said, hey, I'm from the police department. And I didn't have to do it, but my home did it all by itself because I've preset all of these things up. Not only did I preset all of them up, but right now it's calling my lovely son and it's saying to them, hey, get over to your mom's house. Something's going on. And it's also going to be able to alert my medical team and all the other ones. So let's say that I want to 
let's say some other event happened and I'm sleeping and carbon monoxide happens and my wonderful digital life services is gonna be able to say, oh, and not only that, but my heart rate's gonna change and Wonder Bar, who's over there, oh, I can't do it and stop. Really, I have to stop? So anyway, we think we're the future of self-service automated services because you don't need monitoring from somebody else. You need it from yourself. Thank you very much. All right. Wow, enthusiasm. She was very enthusiastic. <laughs> uh, and, and good stuff, too. I mean, yeah, they yes, have integrated right. a lot of interesting stuff into the, into the functionality Why, there. That's basically taking out the, uh, the, the people dependence. who... The de yeah, it's taking out the dependence on people to offer these services where you can integrate it yourself, which, yep. is, uh, which is awesome. And it is the future, you know? You know, we've heard a lot of things today. Uh, we've, we've seen a little bit of overlap, but even like... I think like we for, have for another. Don't wrap it up you just think so? yet. There's a dog up on stage. Okay. There's a My dog? My best okay. friend. Oh, oh, we've got one more. Okay. We have one more, and I want to see It's a connected it. solution that utilizes crowdsourcing to locate lost animals. Too far? My best friend is a connected solution that utilizes crowdsourcing to find lost animals. Every year, 10 million dogs are lost. And this is Haiku. This is also Haiku on the screen here. And what, let's let Haiku take a walk. So this is Jamie's dog, Haiku. And Jamie's relaxing, so she's not aware that Haiku has gone away. As Haiku moves, he's moving through the community, through the neighborhood, and all the people that are part of the application, part of the solution, their phones are lighting up in the background. They're becoming search mechanisms to identify where Haiku is. So, so far, Haiku stopped at Bob's bar and had a drink from the dog-friendly bowl. And he's moving, and now he's been found in one of the cells. So now, Jamie gets into her connected car, and the address of where Haiku is is displayed on the connected car screen. So as Jamie moves closer and closer, Haiku becomes found. So the technologies that we use for this are, are AT&T Drive, uh, the gimbal proximity sensor, and uh, we also use our own hub and spoke uh, communication system. And what that does is basically uh, all the devices here are spokes in our hub. So the owner's phone, when the dog is lost, it threw a message into, the, into our hub saying, oh, my dog's lost. All the neighbor's phones are also connected in to this hub. So when the dog is lost message was sent in, all the other phones in the neighborhood were notified immediately that the dog is lost, and they all go into find the dog mode. Once the, uh, the dog gets near one of the neighbor's phones, then that phone says, oh, I found your dog, and it goes to your car. One more thing. Here. One more thing. We utilize the HP Link um, watermark, and we put this on a 3D tag that we printed, and this is for a very important reason, because as the dog is found, the person that found him have no idea who they should be releasing the dog to. So this actually creates a credential for the dog owner running a video showing the dog owner playing with the dog. So when the dog owner arrives at the place where the lost dog is, there's no question that that dog belongs to the owner. Okay. All right, thanks. All right, thank you very much. I love dog apps. <laughs> I love the fact that it will show the person who found the dog yes, a video is, of them playing with their own dog. That's probably the you know main that's the right thing person. Am missing. Although if hey you're guys, oh here we oh, here we got, here got another we, go. we got another. Um, I am Anup. I'm from St. Louis, and I love plans and guns, right? So, <laughs> so Smarty is a solution for automating the entire industrial greenhouses and industrial farming. So we just prototyped a, a fully working device. And what this device does is, you can actually use this Smart G device in your industrial greenhouses and farms. So the device has got multiple sensors to that, but the cool thing is, it can actually control a number of devices within the, the greenhouse or plant. For example, it can control the soil, you know, uh, 
temperature, mats, it can control the, the lights. Because you know this, right? When you grow a plant, there are five or six critical vital aspects that control the growth of a plant. So what we have is, we have to deploy these devices as swamps. You have to plug it in, you know, uh, into the soil. And, and uh, what you see there, right behind that is a soil moisture sensor. And it has got all the other sensors too. So what you can do is, you know, you go to the dashboard, and the dashboard, it actually, you know, shows you um, the entire vitals of your plant. So this is a fully working prototype of the device. So what you see here is a number of uh, sensors over here. And this device, you can actually deploy it in the farms in multiple places, or in the greenhouses in multiple places. And this actually uses the MDOT technology to communicate back to a base station, right? And the base station communicates back the entire sensor data to M2X. So in the M2X, we capture you know, a number of parameters. So if you go here you know, to the smart uh, you know, uh, greenhouse device, you will see the entire data that we are capturing. And we are using this data to make smart decisions about the, about the greenhouse or the plant. You can see here, what is the overall you know, status of my greenhouse or, or, the, or the farm, right? And it, it actually gives you a pretty nice view of all the standard deviations. So here, the cool idea is you can push the profile for a specific crop or vegetable to this entire set of devices. So I'm going to say, hey, I am going to plant tomatoes. And for tomatoes, now I'm in the germinating phase. So for tomatoes in germinating phase, what are the specific environmental aspects that you have to monitor and how you should control the lightning, what should be the watering schedule, everything the device knows. And it shows you a nice visualization of you know, the soil temperature profile, the moisture profile, and everything. And if you want, you can go to each specific device and see the entire information as well. But what is cool is it can talk to the devices within the fam. So unfortunately, yeah, so here is a, you know, so, so assume that this is a, a light in the fam. And once the device talks to the device, you know, talks to the lights and sprinkles and everything, based on the changing parameters, it will adjust all this so that, you know, the farm or the greenhouse environment is actually adapting to the crop that you're growing. So, so that's a, you know, a quick overview of, of the um, entire you know, um, farm and greenhouse automation solution that we have built. We call it Smart G. All and, right. Yep. Big round of Thank applause, you. please. Thank you. So the thing, the thing that I caught that was most interesting was not just controlling watering and stuff, right. but building a profile for each type of plant. Exactly. Oh. So if you had bananas, you don't want them treated the same no, as tomatoes. definitely not. We have zone out okay. up here. Zone out. WebRTC, I want to combine it with wearables and make conferencing a lot more intimate and a much more futuristic experience. The way I'm going to do that, I'm going to get rid of the keyboard, I'm going to focus on speed and performance, and creating a much better user experience. This is my solution. Um, I'm using a Mio ver um, wearable, and this basically can detect my tendons and figure out my roll, pitch, your X and Y, Z coordinates. And then I am interacting with the WebRTC solution uh, through their APIs to interact with the system. So I'm going to dive straight into the demo. Um, OK, so I have two instances of WebRTC right here. The right side is going to show the gestures that are going to be detected. For this use case, I'm going to pretend I'm talking to my ex-girlfriend. And she's not too happy with me, and I'd like to be able to occasionally block the video and audio when things get a little too rough or, I don't know, she gets a little too difficult. So here's the use case. Um, I'm talking, and then she's talking, but I kind of want to zone out and mute her out for a bit and maybe listen to some music. So I'm going to use my wearable. I'm going to double tap. OK, so I'm just going to keep going with my presentation. So essentially, we'll start playing ACDC. That's interesting. And so while I'm continuing with the presentation, um, say, for example, 
I kind of want to zone out again and not able to look at her image, um, I can actually use my hand and I can double tap and I can swipe my hand left and right and I can use that to control the WebRTC experience. In addition, if I want to mute out the volume, I can use my hand again, double tap and squeeze my hand and then I can mute the volume, double tap, do it again to unmute it. Another interesting experience is controlling volume. And again, the great thing about this platform is it's all focused on natural and very intimate experiences. So as an example for rolling my hand up and down, I could do something like that, and then I can use that to increase and decrease the volume. I really want to try and get the, the audio to play because it's a very cool experience. It's um, you double tap and stretch your hand. Oh, there you go. And they'll start playing ACDC, which it's probably a good track when you know, you're talking to see if you can other who isn't too happy with you. And this essentially concludes my presentation. So as a conclusion, I want to immerse the user, I want to create speed, and I want to replace the keyboard, and I want to do it in a futuristic way that creates a meaningful experience. Thank you guys. Okay, so Callie is rocking out. We got a little ACDC to uh, Wrap up the show. Is that I what I'm supposed to do, Dave? Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's pretty much it. So. Okay. Wow. We. Wow. That so was a. That was a lot. Action packed. Uh, a co hour, a couple of hours. I, I, I don't know, know how, how long, long we've been here. Yeah. But lots of great stuff, lots of great ideas. And of course, remember guys, with the implementation of stuff, we have, uh, they had 24 hours to put it all together. Yeah, everything you just saw was built in the last yeah. day. Which is incredible. Yeah. I mean, look at the state of a lot of this it's stuff. Amazing. It is amazing. So uh, I, I have huge props to these guys who we, are working their butts off out yeah, here. Yeah, they have been. So we've got pages and pages of notes. <laughs> so now here's the thing. What happens now is all the, they've narrowed it down from you know a hundred different groups to like twenty, right? And we saw all their presentations, but we don't know who's going to win yet. That's true. So what's going to happen is they are going to go off and they're going to begin the judging process. Correct. But that takes some time. So we don't have all the time to stay with you guys and see. So what we're going to do don't is don't worry, we won't lead, lead, don't worry, let, let don't you worry. down though. The top three who come out of here, the top what with oh. So Hold the top on. three, the top three that come out of here are actually going to go on month tomorrow. Correct. And they're going to present during the big AT and T keynote. Well, and that keynote is their press conference during the CES uh, press day. Yeah. Which all you know, all the companies have a press conference, and this is their big one. And so they're going to allow the three finalists yeah. to come up on stage, do their presentations. So and they'll that's have the a real little bit more is. time. They have, yeah, they tonight, have till tomorrow to get it, to get to it get ready. ready. But and they, then they get the final win. Uh, winner will be announced uh, that day right on stage. Yep. So everybody gets to hear it. And then, if you're not watching it there, on Tuesday, Correct. we're going to show you guys who the winners are during our live show exactly. on the CES Live. So if you go to geekbeat.tv slash att that will all be there. Geekbeat.tv slash live, CES Live. CES Live. For the Tuesday presentation. That's right. So I don't yeah. remember exactly what time we're doing it, but I know it's Tuesday. Yes. So if you're watching, don't worry. We're not going to leave you hanging. We're going to let you know who, who wins this thing. Right. Because we want to know. I can't wait to find out. I have... I mean, I was floored by all of them. Uh, there were some real, there were some ones that really kind of stood out to me. I want to hear what you guys thought. What excites you? Leave a comment below. Chime in. Go on Twitter. Use that hashtag att. Uh, hack and let us know what you thought was the most amazing thing. All right. I know you don't want to be done with it. Of but course, I don't want to. But I am done. wondering: Are there more pretzels? I think there's pretzels. Pretzels I and Red Bull, we, maybe more. You don't more? need any more Red Bull. Okay, hey, guys. Where's my Bam Bam Hammer? No, no Bam Bam Hammer. Thanks so much for staying with us for several hours today. I hope you guys enjoyed this coverage. Give AT and T lots of feedback. Yes. Give them some Twitter love and everything Tell else. Tell them what you thought about of this all and right. what you want to see next year. That's right. So that's it for us. We're going to wrap up here at the AT and T Developer <laughs> Conference. Exactly, and, and this, uh, this wonderful hackathon, 24 hours, two days worth of, I don't know, I, I've been thrilled 
one thing I was going to say earlier. Oh, yeah? The thing that stood out to me about the entire hackathon uh -oh. was the energy level that stayed throughout the entire time. And and the, the happiness, the energy, the, the positivity. attitude, the positivity. That's the perfect word. <laughs> so thank you, guys. And we're out. That's John. That's Callie. We'll see you guys. Bye. Bye. Final and last but not least, let's welcome Nancy from Anti Snoozer. Good luck. Two minutes. Hi, guys. Um, so, how many of you are familiar with ATT's It Can Wait texting and driving campaign? <laughs> When we first became aware of the campaign, we were inspired by the innovative approach AT&T took to promote driver safety, so much so that we decided to take it even further. According to a poll conducted by the National Sleep Foundation, we found that about 168 million adult drivers in America have admitted to operating a vehicle while feeling drowsy. What's more alarming is that almost 40% of that population has reported they've actually fallen asleep at the wheel. What really inspired me was a recent tragedy involving my family when my uncle was driving back late from Florida one night for an emergency, and my aunt was in the back seat catching up on her sleep when he dozed off. There is a terrible crash, and now one of the liveliest people I know is restricted to a wheelchair. Nobody should ever have to go through this. Today, we're gonna show you how we integrated AT&T Drive APIs to address this problem. This is my brother, Peter. Hi, I'm Peter. <laughs> He's driving back home after a 48-hour hackathon. Naturally, he feels quite drowsy and begins dozing off. As you can see, the camera is situated on the vehicle's dashboard, or for the purpose of this demo, on the laptop, um, is going to track his shifts in facial expressions. We've designed AT&T's Drive integrated camera to, de to detect four things. Yawning, excessive blinking, shifting of the pupils from away from the road, and shut eyes. All of these facial qualities will set off alerting mechanisms. You'll see that when Peter's eyes are closed for a few seconds, a sound alarm will be initiated. His smartwatch will simultaneously vibrate in an attempt to wake the sleepy driver up. <laughs> These two warnings will be disabled when the driver is alert and keeps his eyes on the road for a few moments. Thanks to the technology provided by AT&T Drive, we are able to address and resolve this resounding issue of falling asleep at the wheel. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> see what I mean? Thank you, Nancy. That's awesome. <clears throat> All that done in less than 48 hours. So I'm thrilled to announce the winner of the 2015 AT&T Developer Summit Hackathon Challenge <laughs> is... Find our mark, guys. Step up to the red line. Come up here, guys. Come up here. Get the check. That's the most important thing. Photo up. One more round of applause, folks.